This week, we have the opportunity to talk to Dr. Ibrahim Aspalot, who is the Hearts Family Associate Professor of Engineering Science and Mechanics Department, Biomedical Engineering Department, and Neurosurgery Department at Penn State University. As some of you may know, Dr. Aspalot's main research focus is in bioprinting and tissue engineering. In this interview, we got to dig deeper into some of the exciting work that he's doing and get some personal insights into his career journey. Uh, thank you for finally uh, you know, connecting with us and uh, really glad to be able to connect with you in person. Uh, we wanted to uh, really take this opportunity to kind of talk about your work, so thank you for, for your time. Um, now, many of us in the bioprinting world are probably quite familiar with your name and you're definitely one of the key opinion leaders in this field. So I think some of us are quite curious how you started your journey in bioprinting. <laughs> Maybe you could share a little bit of the history of how this all began for you. Well, uh, thank you very much for the kind invitation, uh, as well as your uh, uh, compliments. Uh, so we're trying uh, to, uh, uh, to, uh, to perform research uh, that uh, is going to you know, bring some uh, values and have some uh, uh, you know, translation potential into the marketing, into the clinic in the future. So uh, I've been in the bioprinting field for about 13 years, uh, a little longer than 13 years. Uh, so uh, I'm a mechanical engineer by training. Uh, and then uh, I move into 3D printing. Uh, at the time that I start uh, my PhD work uh, uh, in, in University of Buffalo, New York, mm -hmm. Uh, I just started uh, bioprinting work there. So uh, the lab that I, I joined uh, in Buffalo uh, was a, a 3D printing lab. And at, its, at the same time, the lab was, uh, was moving into tissue engineering mm -hmm. and bioprinting research. Right. So I'm, I'm glad that uh, I just joined at the very right time, right? So yeah. in 2007. And I got in there and uh, I started 3D printing work, of course, uh, what uh, we were doing at the time was, was, was I mean, right now is very simple, right? So yeah. uh, at the time, uh, the goal was to 3D print uh, tissue scaffolds, even like some of them are acetylar, that means no cells in them, right. uh, just to show, you know, prototype bioprinting systems and potentially uh, apply for uh, skin regeneration. Yep. Uh, sometimes we don't really need cells. Uh, all we need uh, is, is printing some matrices. Mm -hmm. So my research there uh, as a PhD student is to design uh, and 3D print uh, wound dressings mm, uh, right. that can be applied uh, for, uh, uh, you know, uh, for various different purposes, and including, uh, you know, uh, uh, medical uh, right. applications as well as sure. military applications. Actually, the grant that I, uh, I, I supported my work at that time was uh, was supported by the U.S. Army. Sure. Uh, so for military applications. Uh, so uh, I uh, that's how I, uh, I I got into 3D printing work, bioprinting right. work. Mm. Uh, so then uh, in 2010, late 2010, uh, I just got. Uh, uh, a, a faculty interview at the University of Iowa, and it was very successful. Awesome. So I got an offer from University of Iowa, and then I joined uh, University of Iowa as a new faculty in January 2011. Fantastic. Very exciting. That's great. So was there somebody in your career who has really made an impact um, and sort of changed your trajectory in your research? Yeah, I think uh, I, I want to I, I, I wanna tell you a very interesting story. Uh, great. So uh, I always tell this story, uh, particularly when I meet with people from press. So uh, at the time that I joined University of Iowa, uh, my uh, my startup package was was uh, uh, was not really large, was not really uh, big enough for me to start a biological lab. So mm. in order to in order to uh, do bioprinting research, of course, we need to have bioprinters. But yep. in the meantime, we need to have the biology lab, right? A lot of uh, instrumentation needs, you know, cell culture rooms, right? Yep. Uh, as well as the microscopy facilities and so on. Uh, so these are not really easy to to develop without really you know without any sure. sufficient funds. So at the mm -hmm. time, 
uh, my I had very very limited opportunities, and then uh, even like uh, the the total startup that I had was uh, was slightly lower than than the cost of a, of a custom made bioprinter that I have currently in my lab. So <laughs> right. it was. It, I mean, you get the printer. So yeah. what are you gonna do, right? <laughs> right, without, right. Without other things. So that was the big the big question. So then I was thinking, and these things just. Uh, I, I, I mean, I'm just talking about 2000, early 2000 now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, I was thinking whether I should uh, do another, you know, different types of research, which doesn't sure. really need any, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, lab settings, a biology lab. It could be a virtual, uh, you know, manufacturing research that, that I was planning to do. Virtual manufacturing means like digital manufacturing. Everything is like, you know, software based. You know, mm-hmm. coding. Uh, so, and and uh, I was gonna actually do that, but uh, uh, it was uh, mid 2011. Uh, Jeanne Tilmany, she was uh, the associate editor editor for uh, Mechanical Engineer magazine, mm. uh, pu- published by the ASME, the American Mechanical uh, Engineering Society. Yeah. Uh, so it's a very popular magazine, uh, and. Uh, she she reached me out and then she sent me an email and at the time uh, my name was not really uh, you know known uh, in in the field of bioprinting so mm-hmm. I, of course I did some bioprinting work but but as a graduate student so sure, sure. Uh, then I, I I you know asked her how how she found me so mm. she told me that uh, she was uh, uh, an alumnus of uh, University of Iowa and oh. then she looked at my profile. And then, since I did some bioprinting research in the past, so she asked me if I was inclu- if I was interested in contributing uh, to a magazine article. Uh, like she, she would like to interview me, and then mm. she would like to get my opinion on you know how we we can uh, 3D print uh, uh, vascularized organs right. that we can use for uh, sure. transplant. So yep. uh, then, uh, then I was I was. Uh, extremely excited and then hey i mean <laughs> of course i'm interested in this right so yeah i took the opportunity and say hey uh just give me a couple of days okay so yeah. i need to think about that so we did a lot of bioprinting work yeah but not at the organ level not really sure. something vascularized and mostly like uh <clears throat> you know relatively uh, uh simple structures uh, you know, using alginate, uh, sure. yep. which, which which has been uh, one of my favorite uh, uh, bioinks. So at the time, uh, alginate alginate has been one of the very first bioinks. Absolutely. Right? Uh, yeah. So uh, then I, I thought about that. So then then I actually uh, took off a couple of days uh, and didn't uh, uh, you know go to my office. So I was at home and then just thinking about how we can three D bioprint it. The vascularized mm-hmm. organ yes. uh, that could be in the future readily available for transplantation. Sure. And and then I, I thought about that for a couple of days at the end. Okay, here is the concept. You know, I got the concept in my mind and I yep. developed that. And then uh, uh, in in the concept, uh, of course, the biggest critical uh, uh, challenge was to integrate the vascular network, right, the vascularization in the mm-hmm. bioprint tissues. So it, at that time, I developed the coaxial nozzle bioprinting technique in my mind, where uh, you know we can use uh, a direct ex- extrusion approach. We can extrude the tubes of vessels, mm-hmm. uh, right. and then uh, we can perfuse them, and we can integrate that with the rest of cell printing uh, to to make a, a cellular. <coughs> vascularized tissues mm. so uh then i explained that right and then she wrote the story of course uh, uh she added other uh, uh you know people uh in the interviews she also interviewed some other uh, uh leading sure. experts mm-hmm. right uh and the uh, the name of the article was 3d printed life ah, okay so 3d printed life i will be happy to share that article yeah, and then the article, uh, no, printed life. Sorry, right. uh, just the printed life. Uh, the article was uh, uh, was published, I think, January two thousand twelve. Mm, okay. So I'm checking that. So it took some time for uh, the article uh, to be published. <coughs> Excuse me, and to get online. 
and then uh, and it got a lot of publicity. That's awesome. Right. Yeah. So you got a lot of publicity. And in the meantime, I asked one of my students, hey, I want to try this coaxial uh, uh, nozzle printing for, right. for vascular, vascular, vascularization purposes. And, and she did that. And she said that, yeah, that's, that's successful. That's fantastic. Right? It worked. Yeah. And then in yeah. the meantime, all right. So now I'm establishing the lab. Okay. And then I try, I try a lot. And uh, I, I raise a lot of... Uh, uh, you know, funds through different projects. So yeah. uh, at the time, bioprinting was was very very new, not really well known as as it is now. Sure. Yep. And then uh, I, I I met with several people, like all funding agencies, and I mm-hmm. was going there and presenting. Hey, I have an idea. Mm-hmm. Would you support this and so on? And eventually, I I could make that happen. So that's fantastic. Uh, I developed a lab which was uh, was pretty. Uh, pretty large enough to to perform bioprinting research, mm-hmm. and uh, and we did uh, amazing work at the University of Iowa. I had uh, very talented students. Uh, some of them are professors now at, at, at different uh, institutions uh, yeah. around the world. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, so this is a this is a, a very interesting story. But uh, uh, I think it was a, a couple of years ago that right. I contacted the. Uh, uh, the the uh, the senior uh, the uh, associate editor for for the journal uh, Jean uh, Tillman. I, mm-hmm. I contacted her and, and I had a phone call with her and said that hey, you don't know, but you had a very big impact on my career. Right. So yeah. if you didn't really reach me out at that time, I probably yeah. wouldn't be in the bioprinting research. As uh, uh, as as I mean, your opportunity there. Right. Uh, it, it basically gave me a, a big motivation, right? right? So I should do this research. Right, right. That's fantastic. I mean, that's a wonderful story that, you know, uh, you just never know when an opportunity comes by knocking at your door and this is one of those that you just grab and go, right? So that is that is so so it's awesome and just inspirational. That's, thank you for sharing that. Oh, so, exactly. Yeah. Well, I saw that you, you definitely focused some of your work on cl- clinical translation and. Um, now, I saw that you recently got an NIH grant that was uh, developing this process of uh, interoperative bioprinting, which, you know, which means that you're directly printing into the defect area. Um, and, you know, and, and this is for cranial maxillofacial reconstruction. So it sounds like a pretty complex project. And I'm just curious to hear, like, what is your approach and how do you sort of plan to tackle some of the challenges in creating this tissue multiple tissue compartments sure i think uh, it, it at the time that i started this project since i'm a, a mechanical i mean a mechanical engineer by training of course and moving to a tissue engineering uh research and we we, we learn a lot about the biology so yep. uh, that's also important and we also learn a lot about the surgery uh too like the surgical techniques uh, and uh, so we basically combine all these uh, know-how and uh, uh, and you know apply the three different thing for reconstruction of of defective areas directly in the body, which mm-hmm. is called the intraoperative, as you mentioned, intraoperative mm-hmm. bioprinting. Uh, so uh, the goal here is uh, to uh, you know three D print uh, multiple layers of different tissues, including yep. soft and hard tissues mm-hmm. uh, that are <coughs> extremely different in, in, in their anatomy, in their physiology, in their mechanical properties, mm. in their function. Uh, so, uh, and, and uh, these layers are extremely thin in a sense that uh, the surgeon can't really lay them down mm. by using manual by tools or, right. you know, manual pens or, or you know, other uh, uh, surgical techniques. So, right. and we need to use the robotics technology where we can lay down each layer precisely, uh, say a couple hundred microns uh, in thickness. Yep. And you can go even more if you, uh, you know, use uh, uh, more advanced technologies like, you know, in shape printing. But the, the more time that you, you dedicate, right. uh, you know, it, or, 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 or you devote into, into this process, uh, the longer the surgery is. So we don't really sure. want a surgery that's right. going to take, you know, hours, right? right so we right. want everything to be finished as, as, as soon as possible. Right. So, in this regard, 
uh, we developed a hybrid uh, bioprinting technique uh, that has both extrusion as well as droplet printing, where mm. we can print the bone, and on top of that, we can have the periosteum. You know, on top of that, we, we can have hypodermis mm. and dermis on top, and then at the very top, epidermis. Right. Of course, the vascularization will be a challenge sure. as, as you go take a right, you need to have the vascularization too. So, in this regard, we actually <laughs> integrate. Uh, gene therapy approaches, uh, right? Uh, microRNA technology, mm. uh, where we can uh, induce uh, vascularization by uh, differentiating the cells in situ, right? Interesting. And yeah. then having those cells, uh, or we can also transfect this uh, uh, transducer cells before we print them too. So we have a lot of uh, uh, different options that we can we can try, mm. uh, and then induce this vascularization in situ, and then in the meantime. You know, build a structure, uh, yep. and the major challenge. Uh, I mean, printing something inside the body is. I mean, mechanistically, it's it's uh, straightforward. Yeah. Uh, but if you really want a functional right. tissue to be right. formed, that that's right. a big challenge. So, right. I mean, you can print anything. You print alginate. You print uh, you know other uh, inert materials or or bio inks that are not really performing well. Right. And you can you can just fill the defect. You can do that, but uh, is it going to really make it more? Right. Yeah. Uh, one question yeah. I had in mind was, you know, as you're printing this layers in in situ, right? Do you mm -hmm. think you need a really high cell density, or you know, I mean, the cells will take time to sort of mature or grow in the tissue structure, right? How, yeah, that's how a good question. Think? Yeah. Sometimes you don't need to print cells, mm. like particularly for bone. Uh, or we want uh, the endogenous progenitors right, like, to come, you know, yeah. uh, cells to migrate into the defected area. Right. And then we actually, uh, in, in the last five, six years of, years of research attempts that we have, we, we actually saw that this is a better uh, approach to tackle bone regeneration problem. Mm -hmm. As uh, the printed cells, they contribute less than the cells that are migrating from the... Uh, uh, from the defect area, right. So then you need to print some uh, factors, some um, you know cues, right, uh, to to you know attract these cells and, sure. and, and get them migrated into the defect area. But for the skin, uh, <clears throat> particularly in the uh, hypodermic section, dermis section, mm -hmm. yes, you need to print cells, right. If the skin is is large, yeah. Uh, if the, the skin is small. You know, uh, you can you can have the regeneration um, faster. Sure. Uh, but if you print, even like even if the uh, the defect is small, if you print uh, skin cells, you'll make the regeneration way faster. Right. Right. Yeah. This but is the not major problem. Is major problem is how are you going to make that compartmentalization? Right. Right. How are you going to make that soft and hard? Exactly. Can we see that yeah. interface. It yeah. shouldn't. Be, it shouldn't be like. I mean, half soft, and, or, or they're all mixed. Yep. Uh, and how you're going to induce vascularization inside this thick, uh, you know, yeah. tissue yeah. stack of tissue? Yeah, I think there's multiple challenges that you will have to, you know, eventually kind of uncover, right? As you go through this, and I know this is a like a four year long project that you're embarking. So I'm, we'll be really excited to see some results from that work uh, in the coming years for sure. Hopefully. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I think so far, you know, in in your mind, what do you see as uh, one of the biggest success in your career? What are you most proud mm -hmm. of? I guess. Well, uh, of course, we're proud of uh, uh, pretty much like yeah, any any great paper that we published, uh, sure. right? We we have done quite a bit uh, work in coaxial printing, uh, printing of uh, fabrication of tissue strands, and, and printing them. Uh, and self-assembling them into uh, larger, uh, you know, tissues. Uh, we recently uh, developed a technique called aspiration assisted bioprinting for precise positioning of the particular tissue spheroids. Yep. We actually showed that we could uh, uh, control their positioning in 3D in granular yield stress gels as well. Right. And we 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 we, we made extremely complicated in terms of like shape. Uh, uh, structures that you can't like using spheroids as building yeah. blocks uh, yeah. that has not been possible so far. Uh, we did quite a bit progress with this intraoperative bioprinting technology mm. uh, and and a lot of different other uh, uh, other things that we published so far. But uh, I I have an interesting story uh, regarding that uh, success related question. Yeah. Uh, so uh, back in 2014, uh, 
I uh, uh, I was nominated to uh, the uh, SME's Young uh, right. Men's yes. Fishing Award. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, so I think I was nominated in 2013, late 2013, and then they notified like 2014, early 2014 yeah. or so that I, 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 you know, I was selected for the award, one of the recipients. Uh, at the time, I think they were there were seven recipients. Okay. So I was I was lucky. I was one of them. So yeah. and then I I really appreciate you know. Uh, uh, people, including Dr. Andrew Kuziak at the University of Iowa, who actually uh, supported, uh, you know, all of these uh, nominations. So, and awesome. particularly, he, he, he led those. So, uh, he was my department chair at the time. And uh, then I, I got the award. Uh, and then uh, uh, in, uh, it was 2014, either June or July. I don't remember exactly, but that was the rapid conference rapid uh, right right yep. three, I know three, rapid. Three, yep. three different mm-hmm. conference right yep. in the u.s so yep. uh i think it's an amazing conference i i i've been there several times yeah uh, and then it was a joint conference with uh, uh some some other uh, north american manufacturing conference research conference like right. Manman, okay. uh, and and it, it was a very very big event so they combine all all three different uh, conferences together and now we yeah. have seen a lot of attendees yeah and then i really enjoyed the conference so at the end of the conference they took us to the university of michigan it was organized uh, in in uh, detroit in, in ann arbor mm-hmm. uh, so uh, uh they took us uh, to uh, university of michigan for the for the award night mm-hmm. uh we had a dinner so I was expecting that award, which 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 was which which was okay. I mean, I mean, it's it's a very very typical, very normal thing, and uh, and uh, and I was expected to to give a very short talk, right, a speech, and uh, then they announced my name, uh, and uh, I was surprised because they announced that uh, for a different award. Uh, okay. uh, that that I was nominated uh, right. uh, for that award too. That was the ASME Chow and Trigger uh, Young Manufacturing Award. That's awesome. Uh, so that was given to uh, a, a researcher with you know uh, some significant accomplishment sure. in, in sure. manufacturing uh, research. Uh, so uh, and and I was nominated uh, for that award too, but I didn't know that I I got that one too. So that's fantastic. Uh, oh, that was me. Oh, I got that one. So. <laughs> Then, then I gave uh, two speeches uh, right. the same night with you know two awards like in two hands, sure. and, and it was it was uh, something that I I, I, uh, I don't I don't really uh, um, forget it. So it's yes. uh, it was oh, a very gosh. very very uh, uh, you know uh, important moment for me. Absolutely, oh, I can imagine. It's almost like winning the Academy Awards, right? You can relive that kind of moment. <laughs> well, uh, I mean. Uh, of course, the, the the Academy Award we can't really compare with, with <laughs> I other know. awards, but, but sure. I mean, uh, is is a very young, uh, you know, uh, researcher, is an assistant professor. I mean, these awards were uh, they're very helpful to you know encourage you for sure uh, to succeed yeah. in your research and then help you to kind of establish your research better and you know uh, increase your in, increase your re- recognition. So these yeah, are very important. For sure, I think so. I think these opportunities really. Uh, you know, really give sort of lay the pathway for new investigators, young investigators in the field. So I'm hoping that your story will inspire other young investigators who are listening in, uh, you know, to kind of follow your path as well. So so thank you for sharing that. Well, of course. I mean, I need to also acknowledge uh, the help that I got. I mean, it's not really just, just me, myself, you know, my, sure. my uh, you know, my, my uh, you know, hard work or so, but it's it's also the hard work from students in the lab, absolutely, uh, and particularly at the University of Iowa at the time, uh, with very limited resources. I think we accomplished quite a lot, uh, and 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 those accomplishments, you know, brought us to this stage, right? Yeah, and gradually. For sure. uh, yeah. So, uh, as, as as I mentioned before, of course, uh, you know, people should nominate you too, and then they need to write letters, right? Uh, right, and absolutely. and so on. They need to, uh, you know. Uh, they need to help too, so that's why I particularly, you know, uh, appreciate the help from uh, Dr. Andrew Kuziak, uh, as well as the Dean Scranton at the University of Iowa, uh, right. who helped me with, with, with all these uh, award nominations and so on. That's fantastic. Yeah, I think that's awesome. So, are you looking for, um, you know, 
any collaborations or any students right now maybe to join your lab? Um, do you want to give a shout out maybe to some great students out there who might be interested to do some work with you? Sure. So we we do a lot of different things in within the uh, domain of bioprinting, you know, starting from uh, cells till uh, the transplantation. Uh, that includes, you know, the bioink uh, <coughs> synthesis, uh, bioprinter development, bioprinting process development, and doing some fundamental research, particularly the physical, biological <coughs> uh, domains uh, and, and transplantation of these tissues. So uh, we are definitely interested in hiring, you know, very talented people who are mm -hmm. very motivated to do bioprinting research. And then <coughs> we have a very uh, collaborative uh, uh, environment uh, you know I have students from chemistry to uh, biomedical engineering to engineering science and mechanics right. and you know uh, the various different backgrounds and then mm -hmm. they all uh, you know get into uh, a, a very collaborative work uh, in a sense that even you know train people in, in surgical uh, um, you know uh, uh, disciplines right so I work with uh, uh, plastic surgeons like uh, uh, neurosurgeons. I work with orthopedic surgeons who actually uh, comes to our lab and then they do a lot of surgery and they work with uh, our lab members and students and postdoctoral fellows mm -hmm. or even undergraduate students. Uh, and then uh, uh, we 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 don't just uh, you know make uh, uh, you know uh, tissue printing in the dish, right? It's not mm -hmm. it's not just sitting in the dish. But, right. but what we do is uh, we want to see that what we print is gonna is gonna function. I right. think that's that's the hardest part of the problem. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. So one final question. You know, I sure. think uh, obviously a lot of us are in mesenchymal um, stromal cell field. What is your opinion in terms of the role of MSCs potentially uh, that will play in bioprinting and tissue engineering in the next five years? So uh, as uh, you may know, we have been using uh, MSCs. Uh, uh, from various different sources, and sure. uh, I, I, I really appreciate the support from Rooster Bio. <clears throat> and we also have uh, uh, mesenchymal stem cells that we uh, uh, we get from clinics too. Sure. At Penn State, we get uh, adipose drive stem cells, and mm -hmm. then uh, uh, we use them for various different applications. Right. So <clears throat> we make cartilage, we make bone, we make adipose tissue. Mm. Uh, and this adipose tissue, I think, is uh, incredible. I mean, cartilage and bone is, is very, uh, very common. Sure. Uh, uh, I mean, not just for uh, uh, transplantation work, but we also use MSCs mm. uh, for some disease modeling related research. Mm. So we, uh, right. we work with uh, uh, clinicians uh, uh, that uh, we, we can understand the Gaucher disease. It's a very rare disease, it's a bone disease. Why not use MSCs? Right. Uh, so we, we try to reconstruct breast. Uh, you know, why not uh, use, uh, use uh, you know, mesenchymal stem cells? Right. So uh, we uh, isolate uh, the uh, uh, CD34 positive, uh, CD31 negative cells. These are uh, just a, a, a small subfraction of the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the adipose tissue that we uh, uh, you know, harvest from patients at, uh, at the University of uh, uh, Penn State University, uh, uh, the, the medical school. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we use those cells and we use, uh, you know, gene therapy approaches and we transfect these cells to, you know, drive them into uh, uh, an endothelial pathway uh, so that, uh, you know, they can differentiate and then, uh, uh, you know, contribute to, contribute to angiogenesis and vascularization. Right, right, right. Very exciting work. So uh, yeah, like I said, I think we're all really excited to hear more about some of the work that you're doing. Um, you know, I read about the bioprinting roadmap that you co-authored with several other KOLs in the field. So that's a really nice summary of how we have progressed, right? Um, and uh, sure. in the field of bioprinting. So, so really looking forward to see some of the exciting work coming in the next couple of years. Well, hopefully. <laughs> I think, uh, I'm sure it will. Ten, ten years ago, when uh, like 13 uh, years ago, when I started this bioprinting research, uh, I wouldn't really imagine that uh, yeah. we would be in this stage. Yeah, I no, mean, honestly, there, yeah. There's amazing I, research. I mean, in the past, I could be, I could be able to read out every paper. Yeah. 
coming out in the uh, domain of biofabrication and sure. bioprinting, but now, I mean, okay. there's no, no way. I you, know. No, I mean, uh, there is no way that you can catch up. It's, I mean, there's too many. Yep. Too yep. many papers. Like, yes. uh, yep. I'm, I'm glad that there, there are too many, uh, you know, labs involved in bioprinting research. This is mm-hmm. how, you know, uh, the entire research can, can boost uh, right. up. So, yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Ospalot, for your time, and uh, we'll catch up with you another time. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye.